Hey everyone, welcome back to Ask the Car Experts. Today we're going to be replacing front pads and rotors on a BMW X3 F25. Alright, so it's very important to remember to check your brake fluid when you're doing a brake job because as you compress the piston, the fluid level is going to come up and if the reservoir is too full and it overflows, it can damage your paint. So you're gonna to wanna to access this on an X3. You just take, there's a little press tab right here. Back, press tab, this just lifts up and comes out and then you have access to the reservoir. Your fluid level is a little bit below max. We probably will have to take some out. So to set up the vehicle, I wanna be able to turn the front wheel side by side. So we have jacks, and uh, jack stands for the front here. And you wanna make sure that you chalk your rear wheel and make sure you turn your e-brake on. And we're gonna be tackling the front up here. So what's nice about having a jack in the front on both sides is now I can turn the wheels and it makes it way easier to access all the components we need to access. You need a 17 millimeter. Here, help me take this off. Alright, so looking at these rotors, we can see that they have a deep lip. And if we look at the spec, it's 26.4. These measure at 25.2, which is below the discard level. The discard, if you're measuring these, are 0.8 below what the minimum spec is. Now these pads are not worn all the way down below four millimeters, but because the rotor is below the minimum spec, we have to replace the pads and the rotors. Um, just take a note that you do need to replace this clip for your brake pad sensor, which is only on the driver's side. You don't have one on the passenger side. And this did not come with our kit. I would recommend replacing this or getting one when you're doing brake pads. We're gonna try not to break this when we take it apart. All right, so taking the clip off, if you just use a screwdriver, press it out, you can see right here, the spring tension's overcome with leverage, ping, and it pops right out. We're gonna compress the piston first. So if you can see, you can go right in here on the side. It's a nice, easy spot and we're gonna kind of pre-compress the piston. And that frees all of this up so that we can move this. You can see, this is why it's called a floating caliper. Okay. okay. All right, take your screwdriver, put it into the fin, and you need a six millimeter Allen. And we're going to break locator free and get that out of the way. This is a one-time use bolt. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get the brake clip out of the way. So we're just going to gently remove that. I'm gonna take it out of the holder here because I don't wanna break it because I need to reuse this. Normally I replace it. So, I mean, while I'm here and I'm not, you never reuse the sensor, it has a one-time use spring clip on it. So you can actually just rip that off and move it out of the way. take the whole caliper off on this so we have to take these little black caps off make sure you put these back on if you find that they're missing and that the rubber is bloated here it's usually because you've had an axle that's gotten grease on these and it actually can cause the rubber to fail all right so it's a seven millimeter and make sure that you're fully seated because the brake dust can keep your socket or your your allen from going in all the way and you can actually strip it Man, that's tight. <laughs> it's way tighter than I thought it would be. So if this gets stuck, let me show you what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna grab this part with anything because I don't wanna damage this. This is the sliding area. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into my vise going to give it a tap downward pop it free so the caliper 
is now free. So it's not a good idea to let them hang. It'll probably be okay, but if you have any cracking, you're only gonna make it worse. Flip it over and put it right on top. And that it'll stay right there when we work on the rest. I should pop the brake pads free while we're here. Wiggle that one free. Pop that one down and we're gonna compress the piston. Now this is when you wanna watch your fluid level in your brake reservoir. So I'm going to slowly compress this. I'm actually gonna just go like halfway and stop. And I'm gonna come and check my brake fluid, which you can see it's right here. It's The car's leaning backwards, so the high level's here, but I'm okay. I just wanna make sure I don't let that overflow. So that looks good enough for me to go ahead and compress this the rest of the way. Just a good pair of channel locks is really all you need. Okay, and check your brake fluid one more time. And I'm right there at the max. I'm not gonna overflow, good to go. All right, so when you're compressing this, I just wanna mention, you wanna move around to different areas as you're compressing it that way. And you wanna keep an eye on your boot to make sure that the boot does not get pinched and it's not damaged. So it's actually a good idea to inspect the boot while you're here, just to make sure that this is all clean and you don't see any, um, any leaks after you compress the piston. All right, so we need a 16 millimeter to take off the caliper bracket. Now I have my three eighths here, right? So there's usually a lot of force from corrosion. So I'm gonna try this. It's not gonna budge. Right, so you're gonna probably need a half inch. Let's try the half inch on this. Gives me a little bit more leverage, and there we go. Now, the best way to do this is if you have a tool to do it and you have enough room. That's why we've turned the wheel this way. Just get in here. And that is the easiest way. So it's not typical for this to fall off. This is the original brake rotor. So to have it be able to fall off like that is pretty crazy. Normally, since you're not reusing it, you could tap around the hat or tap on the backside to free it up, but this just came off like nothing. So you can see this hub has been taken care of. There's a, a light layer of grease on the outside and you can see that it's just been grease well enough that it did not build up a lot of corrosion. But I still want to remove any surface rust just with a wire brush. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm going to move to the caliper bracket and you can see these are the sliding contact areas right here and you get a lot of brake dust that build up. So it's just a good idea to clean all of that out with a brush as well. Actually, you can see there's some caked up brake dust in here as well. I do like to clean that up. All right, you can see my contact points here. I like to take a little bit more of that brake paste and hit these contact areas just with a real light coat. Then I know that my sliders are all going to be sliding correctly. All right, we're using all genuine BMW parts. We're using the brake fluid paste, which is 83122961871. We're using genuine brake pads, 34106859. I believe that's a 182. And for the rotor, 34106879122. Now there's a big misconception on these rotors that you have to spray and clean them. These come with a coating, an anti-rust coating that's already built into the rotor. So you don't have to clean these. They're not oily at all. So don't spray them down with brake clean. When you brake, it will then clean off this surface and it will help reduce the amount of rust buildup. All right, because we have a floating style caliper, you're gonna to wanna to apply the brake paste directly to 
the back of the brake pad. And we're gonna just wanna go around with a, you don't need it to be super thick, just a light coat. But you also wanna remember to hit the contact points on the sides so that the pad can slide correctly. And again, you just need a light coat on all the contact points. Now, for, so for this style pad, which is going in the back, same thing. And you don't have to be pretty here. And you don't have to be Picasso. Just make sure you hit all of the contact points so that your pad slides correctly. If it doesn't slide, you can get uneven wear. We just had a failure <laughs> of the brush. That's so funny here, right? I'll just use my finger. That's so funny. All right, I just cleaned that off because I saw all the brush material. So same thing, just use your finger if you don't have a brush. Uh, you can just get an acid brush at a parts store and not put any oil or grease or any of this brake pad paste on the contact surface of the brake pad. All right, so here's my locator. I haven't done anything with the surface of this rotor. I'm just gonna line that up and it usually will stay in place with a little bit of light pressure. Take your locator and get her started. I'm gonna give you the torque spec on this. So take a screwdriver for your counter force. This is just 16 newton meters. All right, so the torque spec on these are a little bit different. You one-time use hardware, do not lubricate them. You want them dry. It's 75 Newton meters and then 45 degree angle plus or minus 10. So we're gonna go ahead and rest that in place. And just get them started. going to gently bottom these out. Need 75 newton meters. All right, 45 degree angle I have this set and then I'm going to switch it to 75 newton meters. And and I'm using my half inch torque wrench. Okay. Yep, 179. So these are one-time use bolts because they're stretch bolts. So don't reuse these bolts. You can see how much corrosion's on them too. So it went to 180. Now if I just torque this to 180, then it's not gonna stretch properly. Now it's uh, the easy time to put these on. I'm gonna just rest one there. And this one we're gonna preload up into the caliper. Flip it down. Slider on. Okay, now take a look at these guys right here. So you see this dirt? This does not just wipe off. So we want to clean this. We want this to be a nice clean surface for it to slide in the rubber holders. So I'm going to just use a piece of Scotch Brite to clean this. You do not lubricate these according to BMW repair instructions. All right, nice and clean, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and just slide them in. I wanna make sure that I get them started. All right, that one's going. I'm not going to bottom it out. I'm going to switch to the other one and get that one started. If I tighten this one up on the top without starting the bottom one, you can cross thread the bottom one. Thirty five Newton meters. Thirty five Newton meters. 
Okay, make sure to put your caps on. These are dust protectors, so keep the debris out of those sliders. Don't forget your top one. You want to check these springs to see if they're losing their tension. If they're losing their tension or if they're four years old, you're going to want to replace these. These actually are in, still in really good shape, so we're going to reuse them. It's really easy to put these on. Just set them up, give them a push with your hand. I just, you see I'm not fully clipped here. Take a screwdriver and it pops in. Runaway socket. <laughs> All right, next we're going to move to replacing the brake pad sensor. We need a 10 and an 8 to do this. So these are removed. The wheel well trim just pulls down and tucked under here the cover for it. I'm going to pop that off. This is just a press tab. You can see over here there's a white clip. And you can see it pushes off to the side. It should at least, right? Yep, there we go. Pop that one off. This is part of the frame holder right here. It's just pressed in. And our sensor's out. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the new sensor. You can't plug it in wrong, it won't go into place. You can see that's our lock right there. That rests right back in its holder. You can see this rubber piece right here. Actually, it's a hard plastic piece. That pushes in. Close it up. Put this in the holder. This is important because we don't want it to rub up against the suspension. A lot of times you can just push that back into place. Come down to our holder right here. We're just going to press that in. If it doesn't want to go in, get a little bit of soapy water and it'll push right in. We're going to go ahead and press it into this bracket here. And now we're left with just the sensor piece that gets put into the brake pad and we have our holder that we have to swap over. Alright, let's swap this over and I'm going to try not to break this. So. So what am I doing, right? There's an easier way, right? We don't have to reuse that. There we go, done. <laughs> All right. So this locks in place here. This catches in between these two sections right here and they just push on. Now on a lot of cars, this is actually in the brake bleeder cap which which this is kind of weird there's some brake fluid leaking so I got to check this and see what's going on here but you can wrap it and press it and then put that in I don't want to get all right so I tighten that that's a 13 and I'm just gonna clean it up with a little bit of brake clean and then we're gonna just recheck this at a later time just to make sure there's nothing going on with this bleeder it this way but we're gonna run it the way it was all right, so I'm going to go ahead and place this. This is the part that wears down. Just put it in place and give it a slight press inward. And it just locks into place. Now you can see this is going to not hit the wheel. That's the perfect spot right there. And put this cover back on. We don't have to worry about this on the other side. You only have a sensor on the left front and on the right rear on a BMW. All right, I always like to load up the socket so you're ready. Because working on the ground is no fun. You can rest it, hold it with pressure, rotate it until you're lined up, and go ahead and get one in. I do always recommend starting everything by hand. You don't want to strip anything. Cross thread it. If 
I over torqued these, I could actually warp my new rotor and then have a problem where you're gonna end up with a brake vibration. So always torque your wheels. All right, we need to torque our wheels 140 Newton meters. And like any wheel, you wanna torque them in a cross pattern. Okay, as a reminder, make sure to recheck your level after we did drain some out because when we pressed in the caliper on the passenger side, the level came up to the top and it would have overflowed. So we took some out, we've then refilled it. And then just put this back on, it'll flip back into place and good to go. All right, always remember to pump your brake pedal when you're finished. You can see, look at that, it's completely soft going to the floor and now it's getting hard again. That way, if you start your car and you put it in reverse real quick, you're gonna have a bad day when you hit something behind you. And you have to remember to reset your brake light. So we're going to just press the start stop one time. All the instrument cluster lights come on. Press and hold the left instrument cluster button. And then the services that are due should come up here on the bottom. All right, front brakes still showing green, 30, 3,400 miles, reset possible. Press and hold again. It says reset, press and hold again. Very simple. And now you can let go, it'll go through its reset process. Now it says 90,000 miles. All right, so then it would just be your final test drive. So we're pretty much done. When you go on your final test drive, just do some very light braking a couple of times just to bed the pads in. So you wanna do light to moderate braking for the first 250 miles to really bed in your brakes successfully. And that's all it is to it. Very easy, very simple. It's definitely something you can do at home. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my Ask the Car Experts YouTube channel and I'll talk to you next time.